Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make crystal videos, small business videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos just about every week. As often as I can, I'm doing my best. I also have my own crystal shop, CosmicGeology.com, and I have a second channel where I make more personal fun videos, so both of those things will be linked down below. Today is another crystal chat video where I do a deep dive into one specific crystal to talk about its geology, spiritual properties, fakes, and more, and today's crystal of the day is sodalite. I would just like to mention real quick that I do always try to match my outfit or my makeup to the crystal I'm talking about, and this sweater is just so perfect for sodalite, even though it's literally going to be 90 degrees outside today. I just had to wear it, so I would just like to take a moment of appreciation. It matches so well. So sodalite was first discovered in the early 1800s in Greenland, but it became more popular in the 1890s when it was discovered in Canada. While sodalite is a pretty common stone on the market and seems pretty basic, its geology is a little bit more complex than some of the other stones we've talked about. Sodalite is a tectosilicate mineral, which is a type of silicate mineral. A silicate mineral is one that contains the elements silica and oxygen in its composition. And a tectosilicate mineral just describes the way that those atoms are arranged in the structure. Tectosilicate minerals are a huge group that make up about 75% of the Earth's crust. This group of minerals also contains the feldspar mineral group, which I made a whole video about. But sodalite isn't a member of the feldspar group. It is actually a feldspathoid. Feldspathoids are very similar to feldspars, except they have a different crystal structure and they are lacking in silica. These feldspathoids are relatively rare in nature, whereas feldspars are extremely common. So here is the chemical formula for sodalite. Sodalite is rich in sodium, giving it its name. Sodalite is an igneous rock formed intrusively, which means within the earth, not at the surface, and is formed from the crystallization of a sodium-rich magma. Sodalite can be found in rocks ejected during volcanic eruptions when it comes up from below the surface. Sodalite has a hardness of 5.5 to 6 on the most scale of hardness, and it has a white streak which can be used to identify it from other similarly colored minerals. Sodalite is most easily identifiable by its unique blue color, but can also be found in other colors like gray, yellow, or pink. However, when sodalite is these other colors, especially gray, it is harder to differentiate it from similar minerals. Sodalite is also known for its white veining throughout the stone, which is usually calcite. Because sodalite is lacking in silica, it is rarely found alongside quartz, since quartz is only composed of silica and oxygen. Sodalite is, however, found alongside a lot of other minerals, such as calcite, microcline, nepheline, and albite. You may notice on some pieces of sodalite there is a bit of a shimmer. This is due to the Schiller effect, which we talked a lot about in my feldspar video, because this is a very common feature on feldspar minerals such as labradorite, amazonite, and moonstone. The Schiller effect is caused by light reflecting off tiny platelets or layers within the stone. There is actually another crystal that is a pink variety of sodalite, and this is called hackmanite, and it has sulfur in its chemical composition. Hackmanite is pink, purple, or white, and displays an effect called tenborescence, which means it changes color depending on what kind of light it is exposed to. In typical everyday lighting, it is light and colorless, but switches back to its more more vibrant color when it is left in the dark or exposed to different wavelengths of light. Sodalite is found in quite a few places worldwide, but most commonly Brazil, India, Canada, Russia, Greenland, Italy, and the US, specifically in Maine and Arkansas. Sodalite has a slightly below average hardness of 5.5 to 6. This makes it decent for use in jewelry, but it is still subject to getting scratched by harder objects such as quartz. This isn't a great stone to leave sitting in water for a long period of time, but a quick rinse won't hurt. As with any stone, it isn't recommended to consume any water that has had sodalite soaking in it, as it contains elements that could potentially be harmful if ingested. Working with the stone itself or wearing it is in no way harmful to you, but you just don't want to be drinking those elements and getting them into your body. Leaving sodalite in water for extended periods of time could also cause your stone to crack, break, dissolve, or lose its shine. Sodalite isn't particularly sensitive to sunlight, so it is okay to leave it charging in the sunlight for short periods of time. Other methods to cleanse the energy of sodalite are moonlight, selenite, smoke cleansing, or leaving it in dry sea salt. When it comes to the quality of sodalite, there is quite a noticeable difference 
between quality on the market. Low quality pieces will have a lighter, less saturated color with a lot of white within it. It's difficult to find a piece of sodalite that does not have any white inclusions in it at all, but the higher quality pieces will have a lot less. High quality pieces have that beautiful deep blue, almost black color. The quality of sodalite can also depend on the location it comes from. I've personally noticed that sodalite from India doesn't usually have the best color. It kind of appears splotchy, whereas sodalite from Brazil is usually much deeper in color and you can see that Schiller effect. No matter what quality of sodalite you're looking for, it's a pretty affordable stone and can be easily found at just about any crystal shop. And on extremely rare occasions, sodalite can actually form in crystals. But these crystals are usually way too small to make anything of them. When it comes to treated crystals and fakes, I don't think I've ever personally seen a fake sodalite. Earlier I mentioned that sodalite is a feldspathoid, which is geologically rare, but it is not rare on the crystal market. It is quite abundant, you can find it anywhere. Since sodalite is very accessible and affordable, there's really no reason to fake it. However, occasionally other stones are mistaken for sodalite, the most common being lapis lazuli. These two are mixed up all the time. Especially when it comes to low quality pieces where they both can have a lot of white or gray, it can be really difficult to tell the difference. But there are a couple things to look out for when you are differentiating between the two. The first is the inclusions of pyrite. Lapis lazuli is known for its beautiful specks of gold pyrite. Even the lowest quality pieces of lapis are likely to have pyrite within them. It's not impossible for sodalite to form with pyrite, but is so much less common. You're not going to see it in the same way that lapis has pyrite. The second is the pattern of the white inclusions within the stone. Both of these two can have white inclusions, but you'll notice with sodalite, the pattern is a veining pattern. It is kind of random, little streaks. Whereas lapis usually has a more spotty pattern of white inclusions, or it can even form in bands or stripes that occur during its formation as a metamorphic rock. Sodalite doesn't really ever have parallel banding in the way you will see a lot of pieces of lapis. The next way to differentiate between the two is the shade of blue. While the difference can be quite subtle, it is a huge identifying factor. Sodalite is usually more of a grayish blue, even at its most vibrant, and the color can even be dark closer to black. Lapis doesn't really get that dark. Lapis is more of an ultramarine royal blue that is much more vibrant. Sodalite may also have varying shades of this grayish blue throughout the stone. It can be more of a splotchy pattern, whereas lapis is usually pretty uniform in its color throughout. And the last way to tell is the streak color. If you have raw pieces, you can test the streak, which you use by rubbing the rock against some paper to see what color comes off of it. And sodalite has a white streak and lapis has a blue streak. So here are two pieces that are really good for telling the difference between lapis and sodalite. Here's the sodalite and here's the lapis. These two pieces in particular, the difference is very noticeable, but when it comes to smaller pieces or lower quality pieces, it can definitely be harder to tell the difference. Sodalite is associated with the throat and the third eye chakra and is known as a stone of truth. This is the stone that I always recommend for people who are in school, in work, or any situation where you need to focus, study, or communicate with others. Sodalite is the perfect stone for students as it helps with logical thinking and productive communication. Sodalite encourages rational thought, objectivity, and truth. It allows you to not only see others in an honest light, but allows you to express yourself and your feelings more clearly. It is a great stone for working with others as it can ease the tension between people and allows for compassionate understanding. When using sodalite, you'll be able to look at a situation and see all perspectives clearly. Sodalite helps you to connect to your higher and most authentic self and promote self-acceptance, self-esteem, and trust. Sodalite is great for calming the mind and brings emotional balance during troubling times. With sodalite, you will be able to think logically and turn a negative situation into something positive and constructive. It helps with discipline and rationality. Sodalite's energy clears your mind and allows wisdom and knowledge to come through. Sodalite is a great stone for meditation and working with the third eye. It helps you to connect to your intuition and receive information and downloads. Sodalite helps us to more deeply understand ourselves. When working with sodalite, you will find it easier to speak your truth. So that is all today for sodalite. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please be sure to comment down below a crystal you would like to see me talk about in my next crystal chat video or any other video suggestions. I am all ears to your input. Be sure to check out my crystal shop, cosmicgeology.com. You can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.